Video game franchises are often something we get really excited about. Not only is it a continuation to a story or a character's narrative, but it's also a guarantee that we'll likely be getting more content for a particular adventure that we already adore. That being said, it's also a guarantee for developers and publishers to make some serious bank. While often a franchise can release a title that knocks its predecessor out of the park, occasionally we're left with titles that are a little bit more lackluster than the first, and can flat out end a franchise altogether if they're really that bad. So today we're taking a closer look at that dynamic with our list of the top 10 failed gaming franchises. We'll be including gaming franchises that were complete and utter failures and never took off, and also a handful of ones that fell from grace and have landed into obscurity, often due to reasons beyond the game's content and reviews. We'll also be looking at franchises that just kind of fizzled out. So with that in mind, let's jump in. And at number 10, Bubsy the Bobcat. Bubsy the Bobcat was a product of the early 90s, 1993 specifically, and was an attempt to compete with some of the gaming industry's newest emerging and highly popular mascots. We're talking Mario and Sonic here, people. Published by Accolade, Bubsy was a platform game series in which you play as an anthropomorphic bobcat named Bubsy. Five games in total were released along with a television pilot for a Bubsy cartoon that never took off. As you can imagine, in competing with the likes of a character and mascot like Sonic, Bubsy had a whole lot of, well, competition. And compared to some of the other franchises on this list, just kind of continues to tucker on, even with a lack of popularity. There's actually a sixth game in the series set to be released in 2019 called Bubsy Paws on Fire. And at number 9, Skate. If any of you decide to livestream any of the E3 2018 coverage on YouTube, surely you must have noticed the comment section to the right of the videos, and all the chatter about hopes for game announcements. This year in particular had a lot of outcry for Skate 4, the next game in the Skate franchise that hasn't even been announced or is in development. This chatter eventually turned into a bit of a meme, with people actively writing Skate 4 in the comment section of streams that had absolutely nothing to do with EA or the franchise. So the Skate series had three titles and a spin-off titled Skate It all of which gained a devoted fan base for its fun game mechanics and ragdoll-esque physics. The reason there hasn't been a sequel though is likely due to EA having cut jobs from the development section that was in charge of the Skate titles, which was ultimately closed in 2013. Since the chatter about Skate 4 has been quite persistent, but there has been a new spiritual successor that has emerged instead, which was announced at E3 2018, a game called Session, set to be released in late 2019. Moving on to number 8, Theme Park. Speaking of EA, let's take a look at one of their other failed franchises. Theme Park. This is another case of a series of games that were quite successful and beloved, but due to the publisher have now fallen into obscurity. Oh, good ol' EA. Anywho, Theme Park was a construction and management simulation game where you designed and operated your own theme park. Created by Bullfrog Productions, after the success of the first Theme Park game, EA bought the rights to Bullfrog. And over time, the success of the games under their watch slowly started to deteriorate. EA eventually resurrected the series, but for mobile play on iOS. But in classic EA fashion, it was a freemium game. And no, there weren't microtransactions, in case you're wondering. It was just straight up transactions, with the cost of one in-game roller coaster being a whopping $60. And at number 7, Bloody Roar. The Bloody Roar franchise was a fighting series in which your fighter had the ability to transform into a half human, half animal creature called a Zoanthorpe. The series storyline followed protagonist Yugo, who could turn into a werewolf of sorts, on a journey to unravel the mysteries surrounding his father's death. Overall, it was a fun and creative fighting series that had a total of five titles between 1997 and 2003. Despite false rumors back in 2012 hinting to a Bloody Roar 5 release, ever since Konami purchased Hudson Soft, who published the series, and Hudson Soft closed its doors, the prospect of resurrecting Bloody Roar has been pretty darn bleak. And at number 6, Vector Man. Vector Man is a series that originates back in 1995. A run and gun platformer, the two games in the series were developed for the Sega Mega Drive and Sega Genesis. A third Vector Man game was in the works, but ultimately fell through thanks to the relationship between Sega and Vector Man developer Blue Sky Software. Former Blue Sky employees actually ended up forming their own company in 2000 and worked to create titles for the PS2 instead, which included a 3D version of Vector Man. But because Sega had the rights, they too were working at creating a new Vector Man title, but with a different developer, which went on display at 2003's E3, but was eventually cancelled by Sega altogether. Moving on to number 5, De Blob. De Blob is a franchise that sort of just fizzled out. The first title called De Blob was released exclusively for the Nintendo Wii back in 2008, but was eventually ported to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch in 2017 and 2018. It's a series that seems adamant to keep on fighting since its last title came out in 2011, which was also ported onto those platforms in 2017. So if you're unfamiliar with De Blob, what's it even about? Well, you play as a ball of clear water that rolls around and collects paint from paint bots, and then you roll around coloring objects in the city 
cityscape that you're in with the current color that De Blob is. Now, the first game was released to rave reviews, the follow up sequel, De Blob 2, also receiving positive reviews, but not nearly the same amount of praise. Moving on to number four, Kane and Lynch. Kane and Lynch Dead Men was a title released back in 2007 that was a pretty beloved game for some. A third person shooter game that also offered co op, it followed the story of death row mercenary Kane, who escaped from prison alongside another psychotic criminal named Lynch. Despite having a fairly successful sequel, much of the media that was set to continue the series was cancelled or hangs in limbo. The PSP and Nintendo DS Kane and Lynch title, which was in development in 2007, was cancelled for unknown reasons, despite never receiving an official announcement. The series got a comic adaptation that was made into a limited six issue series back in 2010, but no other titles have been released since. And lastly, a live action feature film was in the works, which had been floating around in development since 2011, starring Bruce Willis and Jamie Foxx. It got a bunch of marketing and then just halted production before being silently killed off. Then rumor had it that Gerard Butler and Vin Diesel were in talks to replace Willis and Fox. Overall, the whole situation is still very much up in the air. Or at least it seems that way. Up next, number three, Advent Rising. Advent Rising was a third person shooter game released back in 2005 for the Xbox and PC. Now, prior to its release, it received a lot of hype. It was meant to be the first in a trilogy of games and had a large marketing campaign that promoted it, including in movie theaters. But when it came out, it got thrashed by disappointing reviews thanks to the substantial amount of bugs in the game, which often resulted in the title freezing. Sales weren't great either, and by 2005, publisher Majestico Entertainment had changed its business plan and cancelled the future Advent Rising titles in the process. Moving on to number two, Medieval. Medieval first debuted in 1998 as an action adventure hack and slash title, with visuals largely inspired by Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. It was initially conceived as a game for the Sega Saturn and PC, but when Sony bought the studio it was developed at, it soon found itself as a PlayStation title, becoming a Sony exclusive. After the success of the first game, Sony requested a sequel, which one of the creators was not involved in. The game still received solid reviews though. Then came Medieval Resurrection, which, due to short notice, ended up being a remake of the the original Medieval that didn't really bode too well with fans and critics alike. The creators of the game, Chris Sorrell and Jason Wilson, had not been involved in Resurrection, and had noted their disappointment with the title, saying that they were disheartened with how the game's alterations turned out, calling its many decisions questionable. And that's where the franchise died out. But hey, for those of you who loved it, there may be hope on the horizon. There is a remake in the works set to be released sometime this year, in 2019, being developed by Canadian studio Other Ocean Interactive. And finally, in at number one, two Two Human. Developed by Silicon Knights, Two Human first came out in 2008 and was planned to be a game trilogy. But prior to its release, the title sat in development hell for almost 10 years, with the original goal being a release on the PlayStation all the way back in 1999. It was a sci fi futuristic retelling of Norse mythology that portrayed the Norse gods as cybernetically enhanced humans who were tasked with protecting the Earth from an army of trickster god Loki's machines. You play as Baldur, who is less cybernetically augmented than the other gods and is therefore to human. Here's where it gets complicated though. In 2007, prior to the game's release, Silicon Knights sued Epic Games, from whom they were using the Unreal Engine 3 to craft the game. The lawsuit was due to, I quote, a breach of contract and inadequacies. This was on Epic's end when it came to support, service, and cooperation when using the engine. Epic retaliated by suing Silicon Knights for copyright infringement, breach of contract, and misappropriation of trade secrets. And in 2012, Epic won both lawsuits, scoring a sweet almost $4.5 million. Silicon Knights then had to recall and destroy all unsold copies of their Unreal Engine games, which included Two Human. By 2013, Two Human was removed from the Xbox marketplace as well. All right, there we have it, friends. What other gaming franchises do you think could be considered failures? Let us know your thoughts and feels in those comments below. If you dug this video, please spread that love and hit that like button. And be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Gaming for more lists just like this one. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next video.